Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the sampling distribution of p-hat. Just a quick note here on p-hat. Remember p-hat has to do with the sample proportion. That is when we have a sample and whatever the proportion of what we're trying to measure is in that given sample. So the first part here we're going to divide into three separate boxes and in our first box we're going to talk about mean and standard deviation. When we talk about the mean of our sampling distribution, so that's going to be equal to um, our mean formula, but then because we're creating it as a proportion, it's going to be out of the number of items that we're sampling. So we usually take to, to find the you know the, the sample mean, we find we take uh, our number of in our sample and then multiply it by the expected proportion. So then. When we do it as a proportion, we take that expected value and we divide by the number to give it, to put as a percent. And so really what happens is we end up canceling those out. So the mean of our sampling, uh, of our sampling distribution, so our sample proportion is going to be equal to just our P, our probability. Standard deviation works in, similar, in a similar way. We're going to have the square root of P times one minus P, <clears throat> excuse me, over N. And all of these are possible if the 10% condition is met. Okay, so we need to make sure the 10%, we need to make sure the 10% condition is met first, then we can use those two formulas. When we have a sampling distribution, what we've done in the past is we've discussed the shape. We want to know what the shape is because it's going to allow us to talk about, you know, where is our center, what is our skew, those sorts of things. Well, what we're trying to get to with a sampling distribution is taking so many different samples that we create something that's approximately normal. And it's going to be approximately normal if we meet the large counts conditions. And that would be if n times p is greater than 10, which is our number of successes. And n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10, which is our number of failures. What we do with something that's normal then is we can ask questions about the probability of a given event. What's the probability that the proportion is greater than this? What's the probability that the proportion is between the here and here? What's the probability that the proportion is less than? So if the sampling distribution is approximately normal, What we can do is, and that's of p hat, just to be clear, then we can use z-scores to determine where something falls in relationship to the mean, and then we can use that to find probabilities. So our z-score is going to be equal to our p hat, which is our score, minus p over our standard deviation formula, which is, let me make that a little bit clearer, a little bit taller. P times 1 minus P over N. And the cool thing about it is we can still use our uh, normal CDF function here. So we could also use normal CDF and put in our low, our high, our mean, and our standard deviation. So both of those would work to find any sort of percent probability that we'd have based on a condition. Is it greater than this proportion? Is it less than this proportion? Let's do an example. As always with our check your understanding, a good way to think about doing a check your understanding would be to pause it right here, try it on your own, or at least try part of it, and then unpause the video to see what my explanation is. Here's the prompt. According to the American Dental Association, 8% of adults have never had a cavity. A dental graduate student contacts a, a simple random sample of a thousand adults and calculates the proportion p hat in the sample who have never had a cavity. So 
at the outset, we've got this thousand adults and we're expecting a certain number of them to not have had a cavity. And so we kind of in our mind sort of have this, all right, well, what do I think is going to happen? That's going to be the next chapters when we're evaluating claims. But at the very least, when we, we talk about this, what we're saying is identify the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat. This particular piece right here, our p hat, tells us that our answer will be a proportion. Now, how do I know? What, what, what's the alternative? Well, we asked a thousand people, I might say, how many people would you expect not to have had a cavity? Well, that's a different question than what, what proportion of people have not had a cavity. And so because we're talking about p hat, that indicates that we're going to have um, a sample or we're going to have a, a proportion here. So what is our expected? Let's look back at our prompt. 8%, that's our p hat right there. So our expected value is that percent right there. Or sorry, this proportion. Calculate and interpret the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. Check that the 10% condition is met. Here's our standard deviation formula. It's equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, which is equal to the square root of 0 0.08 times 0 0.92 over 1,000 which is equal to 0 0.009. When we interpret that, we would say the sample proportion of adults that have never had a cavity typically varies um, the mean of 0 0.08 because that was our sample mean up here remember our sample our our, our mean of our sampling distribution by 0 0.009, which is our standard deviation. Let's check to make sure that the large counts condition is met. So here's the, or sorry, the 10% 10, 10 condition. Uh, 1,000 adults is less than one-tenth of all adults. Okay, and so that 10% condition ensures that we can use that standard deviation formula right there. So part C. Is the sampling distribution of p hat approximately normal? Check the large counts condition is met. These are essentially the same question because if we check that the large counts condition is met, then we can say that it's approximately normal. So what do we need to do? We're going to test n times p greater than or equal to 10. So number of successes greater than or equal to 10. And then number of failures uh, greater than or equal to 10. I think I said less than or equal to 10. They should both be greater than or equal to 10. When I do this, I have 0 0.08 times 1,000, uh, which is equal to 80, which is greater than or equal to 10. So this is what you need to show. When you always, when you check the large counts condition, you should show the formula, you should show uh, your formula with the numbers plugged in, and then your answer. So then down here we have 0.92 times 1,000, which is obviously going to be bigger than 10. So we'd say large counts met so the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal now this last piece this is kind of where it all culminates we, this is where we're actually going to find a number value that's associated with some sort of condition so here's the prompt Find the probability that the random sample of a thousand adults will give it a result within two percentage points of the true value. In this case, our true value is 0 0.08, which is roughly equal to 
not roughly equal to. It is equal to 8%. Within two percentage points would mean plus or minus 2%. So we want to find the probability that the random sample of 1,000 adults will give us a result that goes from 6% to 10%, because that would be 8 minus 2 and also 8 plus 2. What we just determined in this last section was that it's approximately normal. So let's go ahead and draw this. We designate that it's normal by putting the N here. My sample had a mean and a standard deviation that looked like this. So the question that I'm asking if my mean is here is what does it mean to go 6 to 8 percent? Well that would be 0.06 to 0.10. So my prompt is asking me to find the area under the curve that falls between 6 and 10 percent. There's a couple of different ways I could do this. One, I could do a z-score, right? So z is equal to p hat minus p over my standard deviation formula, which would be equal to 0 0.06 minus 0 0.08 over 0 0.08 times 0 0.92 over 1,000. Uh, and really, that's 0 0.009, right? So um, that would be, you know, the same. So my z-score associated with 6% would be negative 2.22. Uh, and that's, you know, so that that's a z-score of negative 0 0.22. Well, I want you to think about it like this for just a second. If this is, I'm going to draw my thing here. So if this is 2.22 standard deviations below, then 10% is equidistant on the other side. It's 2.22 standard deviations above. And so the z-score from table A, so let's use table A. So if I go to negative 2.22, uh, sorry, positive 2.22. Let me do the first one first. Positive 2.22 or negative 2.22, which was the, the six that I found on table A would give me 0 0.0132 and positive 2.22, which was my 10% there. Uh, if I go to table A, would give me 0.9868. And so what I'm gonna do is, if this, and it's gonna get a little confusing here, so stick with me. If this positive 2.22 is all of this, so at or below, so it's everything, right? Then I'm going to subtract this part, which is six and below, and I'm gonna be left with the stuff in the middle. So I want to take 0 0.9868 minus 0 0.0132, and I'm going to get 0.9736 as my answer. Okay, so this here, this pink area here is 0.9736. What's the other way to do it? Let's let's compartmentalize a little bit here. I didn't budget my space very well, but we can we can put it in here. The other way would be to do normal CDF, and your calculator can actually find between two values, right? So you could do uh, normal CDF and our lower would be 0 0.06, our upper would be 0 0.10, our mean is still 0 0.08 and our standard deviation is 0 0.009. And let me zoom in a little bit. And so this would be low, this would be high, this would be our mean. And remember, you have to label these on the AP test and that would give you uh, the same uh, the same answer or an approximate answer that's very very close and so whether so if you show that you use table a you'll be good uh, if you use normal cdf you need to make sure that you label your pieces of the puzzle there and then you can it can spit out that answer for you part e this is kind of a philosophical question or a theoretical question which is a common follow-up they're going to ask you a little bit of theory around you know what would happen if. So if the sample size were 9,000 rather than 1,000, how would this change the sampling distribution of P? Well, because the large counts condition is already met, uh, the sampling distribution
would still be uh, approximately normal. Our mean would stay the same because that's not subject to the number of people that are involved, but our standard deviation, notice our standard deviation formula, uh, right down here, it's this, this little version here, we divide by n, and so when we divide by n, our, our, that means our standard deviation is gonna shrink, it's gonna be smaller. So our standard deviation decrease to one-third uh, point zero zero nine because when we divide by that uh, 9,000, it's, it's a factor of nine on the bottom, right? So, um, you know, that, that factor of nine on the bottom instead of, let me do a little bit of math here, I'll show you. N times you know, P times one minus P and if I put nine times a thousand down here, you see that, because that, that would be 9,000. Uh, when I split this out, I'd have the square root of P over one minus P. And then on the bottom, I'd have, uh, no, I'm sorry. So I'd have this, because you can do the square root of the top and the bottom. I'd have the square root of nine times the square root of a thousand. And so I'd have um, a factor of three on the bottom. So this would be a factor of three times. So it's gonna shrink by three times because I'm dividing by three. So it would decrease to one third of 0 0.009 or 0 0.003 is what my new standard deviation would be. So shape stays the same, standard deviation, which is variability decreases. And we, that makes sense because anytime we increase sample size, variability is going to decrease. All right, guys, so that's the basics of the sampling distribution of p hat. Thanks for watching and we will see